Three, two, one. Hi, I'm Caitlin. And I'm Joe. And we are Americans. Oh, can you see? I am in the second year of pharmacy. And I'm in the second year of nursing. And we're doing this video to sort of explain what it's like to be an American student in a Spanish university. We thought it'd be a good idea because uh, the transition, the kind of culture shock coming over here, it's, it's fun, it's a great experience, but you know, having a couple pointers before going in might be, might be of some use to you. I personally recommend for people who aren't afraid of going all in at once to start with Spanish speaking classes. Now my Spanish wasn't great, in fact, there were quite a few words I didn't know, but the professors are extremely helpful and they often will like the chance to practice some English, especially in tutoring sessions. They, they want to help you with your career path. They're, there's a reason they're here. In terms of learning Spanish, it, it really does require that immersion, just putting yourself out there. Uh, it's very important to meet Spanish people, get to know your teachers really well, uh, and try and cut English out of your life as much as possible. After, after high school, I went to Latin America for six months, and I practiced my Spanish there. If you speak Spanish from America, you'll, you'll be able to use it here in Spain, but there are some words that are a little, a little different. El carro, la computadora, what, what else, what else? Uh, and their accents yeah. are completely different. Here everyone speaks relaxed, and in Latin America it's more super fast. One of my buddies, he, anytime he learns a language, he switches his phone to the language he's studying. Yeah. So that you just get accustomed to like configuraciones or what have you. So that when you see a Spanish word, it's not immediately like, oh, I don't know that. It's like, oh no, it's just configurations, you know, settings. Immersion. 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 That's Immersion the important thing. Possible. Immerse yeah. yourself in the classes because there are so many different things. Now, for me, grading obviously is different here. 5 out of 10 is a pass. So you kind of have to change your expectations from the American grading system, which I believe a 5 out of 10 is a fail. Yep. But, um, you know, understand that that's just the way that they grade here. Learn to accept the differences and you know go their, right their into tests, it. Their tests are bigger though. The tests like, are quite different Yeah. Um, and they do uh, subtract from the scores. That's something that I don't think that they do in the yeah. United States except for the ACT but here they do subtract scores. However, immersion really helps overall because there's a lot of differences between the United States and Spain. Now I know American food. I personally not the healthiest eater. I like chocolate and fast food and everything. And my diet consisted of Taco Bell, KFC, Burger King, McDonald's, probably about five times a week. Here it is very different. The food that they eat here is how would, amazing. Yeah. Delicious. Masano, it's much healthier. It, maybe it's just in my American genetics. Sometimes I just need a lot of meat, like a just bacon. big bacon, bacon burger. But you know, that's pretty easy to make at home, so. And yeah. they have all the ingredients here. It's very, very different from the US. Like, there it's all, you gotta get it done. You gotta get yes. it done now. You gotta get the carbs, the protein in, like whatever the essential things are, and go to work. Here it's like, no, lunchtime is a time where- Two hours. Yeah, you relax, you enjoy it, you let it digest properly. In the U.S., I was used to always having to like buy food for the entire week and then prep cook and then just, there you go. Or eat in the car. Or, or eat in the car. <laughs> Here, it's like, you know, there's enough tiendas, different markets and stuff in between your home and school that, you know, on the way home, you just grab some fresh vegetables from that day, which they're so cheap here. It's really hard eating healthy in the U.S. It is. Because like is. all the produce is just... It's expensive. It's expensive to eat healthy in the U.S. Here, it is cheaper to just make your own food, eat at home, go to the shops every day to get some bread, get some jamon, which, speaking of, might be scary for the first time. At least for me, the first time I saw jamon serrano in the store, I was terrified. I walked into... Oh, that was cool. 
a store known as Carrefour. I had no idea that jamon serrano existed, which here it's like the meat of all meats. Mm -hmm. But when I walked into the store, I saw enormous like pig legs. Yeah, just like, yeah. Just like hanging up in the I, store I and I was curious if I could just like grab it and just take a bite just out of it. If that, yeah. if that was a Spanish custom, like everyone gets their own <laughs> big pork leg like that, yeah. I, I wouldn't fight it. I'd, I'd go for it. Gastronomy yeah. here is a spiritual thing. It's a very, very yeah. important part of the day. Spaniards take about two hours to eat meals. You have to have your coffee and then your other coffee and yeah. then your other coffee that, and that, then your that, dessert coffee. Like that, that's another thing with uh, siesta. Back in the U.S., I was a bit of a workaholic where I just wanted to go, 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 go all the time. They have a thing called siesta here where in the middle of the day, it's nap two time. hours, it's nap time. You enjoy your food, you don't work, you don't, no. You're if, in kindergarten again. <laughs> which, to be honest, all through high school, I wish that was the case. I wanted it. I, I wanted it back. And then coming here, I complained like the first, first half year. But then once I got realized, like, oh my gosh, I can go home and just take, take a, a nap, nap, take a nap, and eat my food and enjoy it, and then feel refreshed for the rest of the day. I was like, oh, okay. Yes. That's for not me, bad. I can't. I haven't learned how to take naps. We have the naps available. We have nap time, which is siesta time. You know, and after lunch, after you're all warm and you've eaten and you're all full, and you're thinking, hmm, it'd be a great time for a nap. For me, I'm just awake. So fortunately for him you have been able to do naps. Cups, pints, yards, meters. Gallons. Everything's different. Fahrenheit. You know. Meters. Does, none of that works here. Yeah. None of that works here. Meters, liters. They work on a decimal system. So while we Americans have a very logical system of cups and pints and our own special numbers, they work on a mathematical system where you have to know kilo, giga, mega, the base system, the sinti, deci, and they say that it's a better system. Estoy de acuerdo, pero no pasa nada. So. Cooking, I still, I admit, I still use Pyrex, I still use the American cooking measurements for when I'm doing recipes, but in university you have to know the, me the, the metric system. Oh, especially like for pharmacy. For pharmacy? And, and nursing too, but... And nursing? You know. Yeah. Yeah, so quick tip. To remember the metric system, I use a mnemonic, which mine is... King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk for kilo, hecta, etc. And it works quite well. And for Celsius, just know that zero is very cold and 40 is very hot. And you're probably somewhere in between. And that's what I used to remember. I don't know how you remembered it, but for me, using little tricks like that really helped. Yeah, nice. And I, in terms of Spanish culture, they, one thing I really experienced was uh, the, the party lifestyle is very different. Yeah. Yeah. Here they, they start partying at 11 or midnight uh, and then go until like five, sometimes seven in the morning. Back at home, you know, you start at like 5 p.m. and then you party until maybe midnight and go to bed by like one or if you're crazy enough, three. Uh, but here it's like, no, the standard is you start at like midnight. Grab some drink with some friends, go to the club, or you know, what have you. The Spanish are nocturnal creatures yeah. <laughs> in, in terms of the party lifestyle. I'm not a big partier, but one great thing that I can enjoy even if I don't like going out is the celebration. So when they say like party culture, fiestas, it's celebrating, you know, there, a wedding, there, for there, example. There's are... so many holidays here. Yeah, <laughs> I love wedding, that. Semana Santa, you have an entire like week or, or two. They generally, you know, pre-Semana Santa, Semana Santa, and then afterwards, um, fias. And that mm. is technically a week, but you have people doing fireworks, you know, celebrating fias in the street, is cool. dancing, fias you know, is very cool. for the entire month, pretty much. Like yeah. during Fias, they have, I think, like pretty much every five blocks, just 
a concert stage set up for just that barrio to like yeah. get together, enjoy the evening uh, beforehand, make paella the traditional way, mm -hmm. uh, and just so many different forms of celebration that like really help cultivate and create a certain kind of community that back at home in Minnesota, so many people are so about their own thing, their individualistic endeavor, uh, what they want to be doing. And, you know, you get to know the people around you here in a different way than back home. Spaniards just take things, you know, step by step, day by day. They, they celebrate everything. Weddings, fireworks, fires, fireworks. Semana Santa, fireworks. You know, yeah. everything is fireworks. It's fun. It's dancing. They're, it's they're celebrating. There a couple times where they, they have this thing called, uh, uh, what, is, what is it? Mascleta? Mascleta. Mascleta. The point isn't to like make lights and everything. They'll it do sounds. it in the middle of the day. Yeah, it's, it sounds like a bomb. First couple weeks I was here and I heard that, I was like, God. I was terrified. I was like, is there a mom? Like, we are we in a attacked. war zone right now? Like, yeah. Jeez, we need, I need to go. I, need to, I was terrified. No, not let my mom know. She'll think, she'll even wor worry more, but. Yeah, no. Yeah, I was like, no. It's just we celebration. Just, you just do that. Yeah. They, they do it during Fias uh, every single day, March 1st, like around the 19th, during the afternoon and the evening. And I thought like, why, why would you do that? Like, you just. It's just sound. It's fun. But when, it's, it's fun so and much like fun. they synchronized in a way that like I kind of felt like there was like a heartbeat yeah. to the city. That just I'm like ah. Oh, it's really nice. The celebrations here is great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm. I really like it in Valencia. Yeah. So yeah, those are some of the tips, and you know, coming over here, I'm sure you're gonna find your own uh, little ticks here and there that you need to transition with. But I mean, we're real. You know, real human beings over here. So real if you person. have questions, contact, reach out. We got the answers and we'll try to help you out as best as we can. But really, I've, I've loved my life here. I've, it took me a while to get over here, but I, I haven't felt more at home and more like myself than coming to this university. Yeah, we're not saying that it's going to be necessarily the most easy process. What we're saying is that it has been so worth it. Definitely. So, definitely yeah. worth it. Thank you very much for joining us today. And if you have any questions, comments, C leave no, them down below. Just come over to Spain yeah. right now. <laughs> come that, over. That's the exact decision you should make right now. Yeah, so thank you. Bye.